Good afternoon, or should I say good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to the championship game for the 2015 Eastern Canadian Women's Hockey League Atlantic Championships here from the APM Center in Cornwall, Prince Edward Island. My name is Ian Boshane. Alongside me is my partner, Justin Garnham. Justin, championship Sunday, final game of the weekend. We see an Acadia team that has yet to lose a game in this tournament. They have had absolutely no problem putting the puck in the back of the net. And we see, on the other hand, a UMB team that has gone to a secondary pair of goaltenders after their starter for the remainder of the year out with an injury torn ACL. We'll step aside here for the playing of the National Anthem and be back in a moment. Once again, welcome back to the APM Center here in Cornwall, Prince Edward Island. Justin, as we were mentioning here before we stepped aside, we have an Acadia team who has had no problem putting the puck in the back of the net. And on the other side, we see a UMB team going to second and third goaltenders here for the season due to an injury to their big... Uh, star for the year. What can be expected here in this final championship game? Expect a really high intensity, uh, high intensity, really quick play game here as we see the two top teams from this tournament this weekend now facing off. And we see the Acadia team who's been really strong all, all weekend here, undefeated so far. And we see Jessica Edmond in goal for the Acadia Axe women who has still. Held her shutout now for six periods of play. So Nothing that is a 90-minute shutout streak as we see an early flurry in front of the net here from the Axe women. So 90 continuous minutes of shutout hockey for Edmund of Acadia. And, I mean, it, go, coming into here, that you know, it's not as we have a call coming up here against UNB. Going to be number 19, Giselle Rutterham. She's going to go off. This one here is gonna called interf interference. It's going to be an interference call. Surprising it's not a body contact call. Just under a minute in here. As we see the Acadia player down on the ice. That is... Number... Over there for Acadia is Charlotte Whitman, but I don't believe that she is the injured... No, she is not. There's a secondary pair of skates. Folks, we will step aside here and take a moment as... Oh, did it appear? No, never mind. 
sorry about that. It appears that we are all set. Uh, heading to the bench, the injured Axman that was, Axwoman I should say. It's number 13, Adrian Becker. So a bit of a scary situation here in the early going for Acadia. No serious injury as of now. Beckers was able to get up under her own power and skate over to the bench. And they'll be looked at over there, but we see this Acadia team right up on the early power play opportunity here. Actually, I do believe, just to correct you, Ian, I think it was actually number 12, Erin Sauve. She appeared to be holding her back as she was leading, but yes, we'll keep an eye on her here. So we see Acadia with a chance. It's the first power play of this game, and they've had a strong power play so far this weekend. We'll see how UMB does with the penalty kill as Edwards dumps that down. Yeah, no, Justin, you are correct on that. I do see number 13, Adrian Becker's out on the ice for this Acadia team, so it is number 12, um, Aaron Sauvé there, so... And once again, we invite you to connect with us on Twitter at Canescaster and at Jabird. You know, Justin, I find it very fitting here. You know, we got one game left. It's championship game. So the question I'm going to pose to viewers here today to tweet in and connect with us is, what is the toughest championship trophy in sports to win? What is the toughest championship trophy? trophy in sports to win is it the Larry O'Brien trophy is it the World Series trophy for the Major League Baseball Association is it the Stanley Cup for the National Hockey League Vince Lombardi trophy for the Super Bowl or is there one that you feel that's not listed maybe it's the Great Cup for the Canadian Football League let us know what you think and <laughs> Shoot us a message on Twitter. Well, with that question here, as we see the UN penalty come to the end here, as we see another call by the official for a high stick, it'll be Katie going to the box this time. Going to be number 23, Robin Kent. She'll skate off two minutes for a high stick, so we'll see a UMB power play here. Yeah, we'll see if UMB can get anything going here early. As there's now 12.05 left to play in this first. You know, this is an opportunity now that's perfect time to step up and really make something happen. If you can get a goal here, you can really set the tone of this game. So we see UMB bring it into their offensive zone now. And there was a nice tip by one of the UNB players. Couldn't quite make out the numbers. Again, we apologize if we do get some of the numbers or names wrong in today's broadcast. Our media booth is in not the greatest location. You see our camera is almost at center ice, and we are to the right, tucked into one of the corners here of the APM center. We are doing our best to get everything right. Just bear with us. We thank you for tuning in today. There's 127 now left on this penalty here to Acadia as UMB now gets their offense going. Edwards now with the puck to her line mate who tries to get it in. Now it's a delayed offside. Back. Yes. We've seen here early on, Justin, quite a bit of physical play for a women's hockey game, you know. We, yeah. we already saw the big interference call against UMB there, and then we've also seen a, a high stick.
along the near side wall. We see UMB take control of the puck. Sent back into their own defensive zone. Pass up ahead there. Does not connect. See Rudderham behind her net now. She works it up to Oatway. I'm trying to get it to O'Brien. It's just back to Oatway. She now puts it into her, her offensive zone as the penalty to Acadia expires. Now Acadia tries to dump that down and shoots it into their own bench. We'll get a stoppage here. We have a shout out here to assistant coach Mark Denley for the Acadia Axe Women. Assistant coach said he couldn't make it down here this weekend with the team. Wishing the girls the best of luck in hopes that they can bring home the trophy today. Thanks for turning it, uh, tuning in here, Max. And we're glad to bring you this championship game. As we see now UMB trying to get this puck out here. It's Brothers doing the best she can as it's now turned back into the UMB corner. Julian. It's a great effort to get it out up to Mooney. She's going to use her speed to get around the Acadia defenders as she is pushed down, trying to get that punk puck. Excuse me, Julian with it, cross ice to the half boards in front of the Acadia bench. See now, Edwards picks up that puck in the neutral zone, dumps it down into the Acadia end. As we see, number three, White Charlotte Whiteman now bringing that puck up. As Mooney tries to rub her off, and it just goes around. Hill gets it, turns around, and now Mooney doing what she can to clear that puck out and go off for a change, get some fresh legs on the ice. Hill now with the puck. Intercepted by an Acadia player, but no, back to UMB. And it just keeps switching possession here, back and forth, back and forth. So we see Rudderham now pick it up in the corner, trying to make something to get this puck out of their zone. 7.35 left to play in this first period here. Acadia versus UMB in the championship game of the Eastern Canadian Women's Hockey League Championships. We were broadcasting live from Cornwall, Prince Edward Island. In this beautiful APM Center facility. See the puck now. Neighbors takes it behind her neck. <laughs> looking for somebody to pass to. She finds number 10. Sarah Hardy. Who passes up to number 13, Corey O'Brien. As a little fight along the boards to get that puck. It's now back into the neutral zone. The UMB. Dickinson has that puck. She turns it up to 22. Mary Jane Brothers, she has a chance now. Shot turned aside by Edmund. As we see it going back and forth right by that blue line. Now along the boards, Katie and you will be both going back and forth trying to get that puck out. UMB? See, Katie dumps it down. You will be swimming around their net, trying to get this puck out now. But Katie is, does a good job of keeping that in. It's just on the line. Uh, we see we see number twelve, Aaron Save here, back out on the ice for Katie. So that's a good sign. If you're a fan of the 
Yeah, I swim in there after taking that big collision along the wall in the opening minute. Yeah, you, you never want to see uh, any of the players go down. And Aaron Sove has been doing a really great job this weekend. So far in three games, has one goal and two assists. She is in eighth spot of the scoring leaderboards. As we see her now intercept that pass, get it back to her defensive partner. Great stop by Dickinson. It's loose in the corner. There's another shot is on net. And it does get loose as UNB dumps it down. It's going to be an icing call here. 5.17 left to play here in the first period. Taking a look at some standings here from the weekend. We see this Acadia team at 3-0, 6 points. Six, a total of 15 goals for this weekend. Just giving up only 2. That's a .67 calls against average. And, you know, if you're looking at Acadian saying we can capitalize on power plays and things like that, coming into today's game, this is a UMB team that only had four penalty minutes this entire weekend as we get another icing call here. On the other hand, this is a UMB team. They've got 13 goals underneath their belt while have given up 9 for a 3.0 goals against average. 3 power play goals from the cells. Meanwhile, Acadia with a solitary 1. Neither team giving up a power play goal against. So that'll be interesting to see here. You know, the stats make these teams look pretty even on paper. But when we saw these two teams meet the other day, you know, we saw an Acadia team that was definitely much more prepared and brought more to the table. Yeah, trying to pull up these scores from yesterday. I can't quite recall exactly what we had. 3 nothing. Thank you for that, guys. We had a 3 nothing win for Acadia. That was the first shutout, I believe, for Enman, if I am correct. They were just offensively all over this UMB squad. But it seems to be more even now today as we have a face-off now here to the left of Dickinson with 4.05 left to play in this first period. Puck now in the UNB corner. Brothers picks that puck up, trying to get it out. She's tied up by an Acadia player. Dixon of UNB chasing now, along with Charlotte Whiteman, working to get that puck. We see Corey O'Brien now working that puck back to her defense. Went up in the air for quite some hang time as Acadia will now get it. And dump it down for another icing. Ian, we've seen quite a few icings so far. Do you, do you think this is going to be a pattern throughout this game? <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of whistles in this game. You know, it's really slows down tempo, obviously. And neither team is really allowed to pick up a lot of momentum. But it's still early here in the game. Three minutes left in the first period, and we still have another two periods to play. So we'll see how things continue to go on, and you know things can change. We could end up going long, long stretches of play with no whistles. See Acadia with a great chance here now. Good. Salve with the puck gets it back to her defensive partner. 
This chance out front is loose. Adjust that. Now UMD with the puck. Bring it into the offensive zone, which is now called offside. Ian, you brought some binoculars here with you this weekend. They've proven to help us see in those corners. Yeah, that, 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 that was the biggest thing here, you know, helped you. Yeah, the sight lines aren't the greatest here uh, from where our media box is. But we are doing our best. See UNB now powering right down the rink. That was rudder hand with that. Now the puck going down the ice again. It goes right to Dickinson <laughs> as she's going to try to make a play. Intercepted by Acadia now. But UNB picks it up again. Here's Hill with the puck. Passes to the middle as Finn deflects it. And then that puck is now put out of play. I believe it went off the stick of number five for Acadia, Megan Marinick. Yes, it did. Yeah. Now the faceoff will be outside of the UMB zone. UMB wins that faceoff. It's Neighbors with the puck. She passes up to her line mate, Ferguson. And they couldn't quite control it as now and it's offside. Minute 36 left to play here in the first period. We see we see this scoreless hockey game starting to, starting to uh, pick up tempo as we see a collision at the blue line. is slow to get up there for Acadia. It is Sam Hawes may have just lost her win there for a second after that collision. See a great chance by UMB here. It was number nine, Patterson with the shot. But Enman standing her ground like she has been these past six periods, not letting anything by her. Yeah, Edman may have may as well have built a brick wall in the Acadian net. You know, Facing numerous shots from both uh, from all three teams during round robin play, and then here, so far against QMB, she's been up, she's been nothing but up to, up to the tasks of all shots coming her way. See now, Acadia behind the UNB net, trying to make something happen offensively. Now back to the point. Whiteman passed over to a defensive partner, but it was deflected away by some UNB defenders. You can see brothers with the puck now, trying to clear that out. It bounced off the back of Dickinson, who now gets it out to, up to O'Brien. Brian looking for somewhere to go, making some moves around defenders with a shot. Edmund turns that aside, and it goes up into the safety netting for a whistle. Final 10 seconds here of the first period, and if if you're Acadia, you got to be pretty happy with the way you've played this period, slowing down this UMB team that really likes to create open ice opportunities and and um, long stretches of play, and just like that, seven seconds left on the first in the first period. And we see this shutout streak for Enman come to an end. The goal will go to Heather Braun. Her, f her first of the night. I believe I may have played a factor in that there. Calling out Edmund's shutout could have been that broadcaster's jinx. As that we hear the final bu buzzer here for this first period, one nothing for UNB over Acadia. 
You're watching the Eastern Canadian Women's Hockey League Atlantic Championships Championship game. We'll step aside for a moment here. Please stay tuned. Period two about to get underway here at the APM Center in Cornwall. one nothing lead for Acadia as we see them get on the board in the final seven seconds of the first period. Justin, you want to just walk us through that goal there again? Well, I, I didn't quite see it. I was trying to check some stats, but uh, it was a really great opportunity by uh, UMB here to sneak one past Edmund. And uh, late in the period, that's definitely something you want to do is get your team on the board carry that momentum into the next uh into the next frame here and we'll see if you and me can uh use that to their advantage or if acadia may come back use that as a uh, fire in their hearts to uh get their squad on the board here tonight yeah and we see Edmon here it'll be interesting to see how she reacts as far as things go there with her shutout streak coming to an end we saw her Shut out both the Blazers and uh, Hurricanes here in the last day. And this is the first goal that she's given up since playing this UMB team back on, um, excuse me, uh, yesterday afternoon. No, no. Was it uh, said yesterday morning? Excuse me. So we will see how. She carries herself here through the remainder of not only this period, but the remainder of this game. Katie looking to keep it down in the Blazers zone. I thought it was going to be an offsides call as one of the Axe women was heading to the bench. UMB will take possession of this one, make their move back down towards the other end, unable to fully gain the blue line. We'll get a call for icing with 13-24 left to play here in the second period. We see the face off here to the left of Dickinson. It's won by Acadia. As Sasha Mooney now picks up the puck for the Blazers. I believe that's now Oatway that has the puck. She tries to get a pass. Hopped over a stick. And that it was another icing call. And I'll go back down the other way. So we see this UMB team up a goal here. And you know, this is a UMB squad that hasn't had as much success as Acadia putting the puck in the back of the net, but at the same time, they have not struggled either. So. so we see another hit here by Acadia. That'd be number 15, Maddie McKenzie going off for body contact. Here's a great chance for UNB on the power play to try and extend their lead now. But for Acadia... Katie, excuse me. You gotta. Right now, you just gotta dump down everything you get, 
unless you have a chance to make something happen, really see what you make of this penalty kill here. So UMB now wins the puck back. I'll bring it into their offensive zone. It's UMB, but Acadia intercepts that and dumps that down. As we mentioned earlier, this is an UMB team with three power play goals to their credit. However, this is an Acadia team that has yet to give up a power play goal. They do a fantastic job of attacking the puck before their opponent has a chance to get into their zone. As we see a near miss there off the stick of O'Brien. Katie does a fantastic job of attacking the puck before their opponent has a chance to set up in their offensive zone and get puck movement going. Shot there, redirected and goes wide. On the clear, UMB able to keep it at the point. Loose puck, that one is poked home. Katie Finn strikes for the Blazers, and it is now a 2-0 lead for UNB. You see, again, we were just talking about it. Could be another broadcast jinx, but we never know. Katie finally lets in their first goal on a penalty kill. It's a great job by UNB, though, to get that power play goal now that, with the two-goal lead. They see what else can, what else they can do with this momentum now in this second period here. Play back on the way. Linesman's hand up for icing and that'll be canceled out there. Back to the way for Arcadia. This is this is number 11. Sammy Hawes, she will lose it. UNB will clear. They'll apply some pressure here down below the goal line. Player aside engaged in a puck battle. Bit of a wrestling match going on below as well. And that one is sent down the ice there. That one off the stick of Natasha Wotan, and we'll get a call for icing with 10.57 left to play here in the second period. We invite you to connect with us on Twitter, at Canescaster, and at Jabird. You can f see those Twitter handles down below. Connect with us, shoot us a message on Twitter, let us know where you're watching this one from. Are you watching from Halifax? Hoping for an Axe Women comeback. Are you watching from Fredericton, New Brunswick? Are you watching from Cape Breton just to tune in to see how the results from this weekend will finish up? We're also asking you to let us know what sports trophy in professional sports you believe is the toughest to win. What championship trophy in professional sports is the toughest to win? That is our question we are posing to you here on Championship Sunday. As this one's cleared out here by Kadia's Aaron Save. And it'll go down the ice for an icing call. We'll get a face-off in at the Acadia zone with 10.09 left to play here in the second. 2-0 lead for the Blazers. You see here UMB's offense doing a really great job so far this game to really control Acadia on their offense that hasn't had many opportunities yet. As we see number 10, Carly Visser with a chance here. There's opportunity out front. Puck's loose. You see UMB players aside. going down left and right, getting in shooting lanes and just stopping any and all opportunities right now from Acadia and not allowing them to put the puck in the back of the net. This is an all-out team effort. See that puck there now going out of play in that safety netting. 
There was a mad scramble in front of that UMV net. I saw Dixon there shaking her head. Must have been disappointed with what happened. But also relieved that the puck did not end up at the back of her net. Face off here controlled by Acadia. Down the right wing side. Taken away from Acadia there by UMB. Flipped up off the boards. Acadia will get to it first. Cutting back here, Courtney Rodding. Indirect off the half wall. Does not connect. That one will trickle in on Enman, and she will hold for a face off with 9.05 left to play here in the second. Katie really needs to get something going here now. Although faceoff is in their defensive zone. They gotta generate some chances here. As we see now, number 22, Kendall Wilson, with a little breakout. But really gotta maintain handle of this puck. As we see now, Sasha Mooney for the UMB Red Blazers bring that back in to the Acadia zone. Like I was saying, you gotta really take uh Take hold of all the opportunities you get. Now, you can't really let anything go. You don't want to keep icing this puck. As we see a little scramble in front of the net, Edmund does a good job to cover up. Justin, we have a message here from Denise Beckers, watching from Anaganish. She says, go Acadia. Denise, thank you for joining us here on Bell Community One as we bring you the 2015 ECWHL Women's Atlantic Championships. Behind the net. Now this one's picked off by Acadia as the UMB defender had her pocket picked. Sent right back in down low by the Axe Women. Looking to clear here is UMB and they will. UMB player going down along the wall there. That was Brittany Carroll. Acadia back up the other way here. UMB just taking all way all time and space from Acadia, not allowing them any time to set up right now. And I, this is really a role reversal here if you're Acadia. This is what you have been doing to teams all weekend, and now you see this UMB squad come right in here and do it to you as we have an opportunity there for UMB. However, that was poked away there by the stick of Beckers. We see some rough stuff in front of the Acadia bench and no call by the official as UMB comes down with a chance and it's stopped by Edmund here. And there in the house, DJ, DJ Mikey Fresh. I think got a little. I think you might have thought there was a goal there. Bit of a trigger finger. Yeah, goal horn went off for a moment there. You got Max, Max Denley. Again, the assistant coach from Acadia who was unable to make the trip down here for the weekend. Shooting us some fun facts about Acadia. Wants us to know who Jess Enman, the netminder for Acadia, is a Holland College grad and played for the Lady Canes here as well. Also a second one from Max here said that this is Acadia's fourth year in the final, fourth year in a row in the finals. Said it could possibly be more, but that's just as long as he's been around the team. So a four-year streak for Acadia in the finals here for the women's Atlantics. See a dump and attempt there off the stick of Save. Does not get through. UMB will collect behind the net now. Yeah, some more stats about this Acadia team. Talking with uh, head coach of the Holland Hurricanes, Nick Miller, before this one. Said that Acadia already has close to 45 girls willing to try out for this team next season. Yeah, that's not even including 
the members of this year's team, the members on this year's roster. So Yeah, so it could be upwards to 60 girls trying out for this team. And from 60 girls, that's that'll be kind of tough on the coaches trying to uh, Evaluate decipher talent, who's going to yeah. make this team. As we see a goal by number 13, Adrian Beckers putting Acadia up on the board now with 5.26 left to play in this second period. It's now a 2-1 hockey game as you see hugs all around on the Acadia bench. Now this will really spark that Acadia squad. Now getting on the board. We'll see what the momentum will be like with this team if they can tie this one up before the end of the period. UNB now, I think the worries will be setting in with that from, with that, from that one goal, excuse me. But you can't let that one goal really put a damper on your spirits. You know, in any type of game, any type of sport, you just got to think it's still 0-0 zero, zero and play your heart out. can expect Acadia here to amp it up and bring it right back down to the UMB zone as they do right away. You got a high stick here. Just the attempted high stick on the puck. So we're going to face off in the UMB zone to the left of netminder Dickinson for UMB with five minutes to play here in the second period. Once again, we will have a flood in between the second and third. So be sure to stick around here during the second intermission. We are not leaving you. We're not taking off early here. We are going to bring you the full three-period hockey game. We hear an in-house announcement here. Jessica Enman, not only does she have the longest shutout streak in this tournament, she has picked up an assist on that goal for Acadia. So Enman will be the first and only netminder to this point in the tournament to pick up a point. You see tempers now boiling over some of the Acadia players uh, talking to the official now. I couldn't quite get the number, but I did see down in the UMB end before UMB had their breakout here, one of the Acadia players was checked to the ice, and I was surprised there was no call. And we saw the coaches on the bench there. They were tossing their arms up looking for a call, which I was surprised did not come. UMB has a nice chance here, and Jessica Edmond does a great job to follow that puck and make the save. We have a two-to-one hockey game here. This is Championship Sunday from the APM Center in Cornwall. You're watching the 2015 ECWHL Atlantic Championships here on Bell Community One. Edmund will once again freeze this one. Yeah, Wilkins did a great job to win that face-off there, but it just went right towards Edmund, and all she could do was cover up and get another face-off here. Another win for Wilkins as rotting handles that puck. Possible two-on-one here for Acadia. See Nash for the Blazers trying to join in here as the shot was wide. Well, the puck is now deflected back down the Acadia end. So go around the net, try and get something going. There's two UN do, UNB defenders there trying to break that play up. Still got out of their offensive zone. Now Rutterham tries to shoot that back in. So we see Courtney Rodding pick up that puck. Fired behind her net around the boards for Aaron Sove, who now dumps the puck down for an icing call. A faceoff will now come back to the left of Enman. 321 left to play here in the second period. We've seen some great offensive play play, excuse me, from both sides here. And Acadia just recently getting up on the board. Making this one an interesting one. 
shout out here to Tasha and Haley Dickinson on the Red Blazers here from Arthur Boone and the rest of the UMB ladies as well from Calgary, Alberta. Arthur, thank you for tuning in here to Championship Sunday for the ECWHL Atlantic Championships. We see UNB sort of responding a little bit here to the pressure that Acadia has brought to their end of the ice since that goal earlier in this period. See Maddie McKenzie of Acadia trying to really fight to get that puck out as Mooney had a chance to put that in, but it did go wide. Ferguson now passed through her defense partners at the point. Mooney attempting to to get a redirection in front, gets a gets a piece of it, and we see bodies hit the floor here. See Sarah Hardy went in hard, and hit Acadia defender number thirteen, or excuse me, Adrian Becker's here, and that was a close one. That could have been really bad, because she did let up a little bit. You never want to see a hit from behind. It was a dangerous hit. Yet another good crowd on hand here for this one. It is the final of eight games here on the weekend. See fans from both squads in attendance. Got to imagine the folks for UNB are a little happier than those for Acadia at the moment. I know I did see walking into the parking lot here before this game. There's quite a few off-island plates. Lots from Nova Scotia and lots from New Brunswick as well. It's really great to see that uh, these people have made the trip over to the island to uh, support their teams. Yeah, well, you figure it's not a very long ride from either of these two schools. You, you figure it's about three and a half, four hours from either of these two schools. You know, you got Acadia from Halifax and UMB from Fredericton so you know it's a it's a reasonable drive and there's no bad weather around on the island for once you know with this winter that we've had up here you know it's nice to see the sun it's a, it's a very my very mild day outside yeah it's really nice to see the snow finally going away as uh, the city of Charlottetown has had a record snowfall over 500 centimeters has fallen on this city and we've seen lots of troubles with uh Snow clearing efforts some days coming down some roads with only one lane of traffic both ways. It's just been quite the winter here as we're finally into the springtime. We see this snow melt, and I know I don't want to see any more of this white stuff at yeah, all. Yeah, no. We are in the final minute of play here in the second period. Two to one lead for the Blazers. Down low. Puck is being worked out behind the net. Sent right out in front. Looking for an opportunity in the slot. There was none available. Three on one here for UNB as one of the defensemen for Acadia has has um, lost an edge there. A quick f message here from Max again here. Wants to just let us know Acadia is in Wolfville, which is a small town, about 3,000 people, about an hour from Halifax. Sorry for the confusion there, Max. Chance here in the slot. Nice pad save there by Edmund. Puck is loose at the side of the net. Dug out for. UMB once again has it. Great opportunity here at the very end of the period. Acadia is able to get it out of their zone. And that will do it for two periods of play. 
A two to one lead for the UNB Red Blazers. We will be back with third period action here from the 2015 ECWHL Women's Atlantic Hockey Championships on Bell Community One. Ugh.
Welcome back to the APM Center here in Cornwall, PEI. Final 15 minutes, Justin. It's the final countdown. Yeah, final 15 minutes of this hockey season for these girls. And it's shaping up to be really great here. It's 2-1 uh, UMB lead as Acadia has a chance there. No, it's dumped down by UMB. I stick by Acadia. UMB. Now to draw a whistle. UMB just blocking all kinds of shots right there. Yeah, the, both teams are doing really well to block these shots. We've seen quite a few uh, this weekend here. Just see all these girls just getting in the way of every lane here. Another shout out to the UMB girls. And the Dickinson girls, especially from their Mimi and Papa in the Limestone of Brunswick who are watching online. Well, Mimi and Papa Dickinson, thank you for tuning in here. We are glad to bring you the coverage of the 2015 Eastern Canadian Women's Hockey League Atlantic Championships. As we see Acadia getting a little bit of puck movement here in the offensive zone. This one's picked up by UMB, cleared out off a stick. So there will not be an icing call on that. Back to the way, Acadia here. Great look there by Megan Ferguson as she was looking to send it, oh, excuse me, not Megan Ferguson, from uh, Hillary Dort as she was looking to send it out front to Kendall Wilson. And Justin, just like that, we see two minutes already gone in this third period. Yeah, this is... Like I said, the final period of the season. These girls are all going to be playing their hearts out to uh, do the best job they can as we see Dickinson make a glove save and cover up for a whistle. But the intensity right now is going to be really high on both sides. And for Acadia, they really want to get, that, uh, get this game tied up and try and take control. From what I remember, I believe Acadia has been leading in uh, their other two games here yesterday. I think this is the first time we've seen them trailing now. I yeah, no, this is definitely the first time that we've seen this Acadia team trail in this tournament here. Yeah, coming into this game with a 3-0 and record. They've been doing... Great all weekend. Very great offensive play. We see them struggle a little early on, but it's good to see them now with that one goal on the board as they're fighting with a great offensive opportunity here. Get another one as Sauve picks up the puck, but her shot is wide. We see Rutterham try and clear that down. It was bounced off the linesman. Now I believe it is Brothers with that. Katie now dumping down. Dixon will cover up. A referee does say play on. She plays that to the neighbors. She dumps that out. Now, Rotting shoots that puck into the UNB bench. A little bit of enemy fire. Now we see Marinick and Mooney in to take draws for their respective teams. I've been watching Mooney take her face off today. She goes in with a kind of, I'll say, signature stance. She kind of shakes her legs a little bit, trying to dig in, and she kind of uses her stick to create some space between her and the, the her defender there, just so she can get... Uh, 
Delayed call coming up here against UMB. So down a goal on the board. Score is 2-1 for UMB. 11.05 left to play here in the third period. Acadia to the power play. Yeah, and this is a great opportunity for Dave Edinger and his squad to uh, try and tie this one up. Really got to do everything they can offensively as we see some rough stuff here in front of the UNB bench. You see number 18, Caitlin Higgins. She chased that puck all by herself into that corner. Now Sauve has it and dumps it down behind the net. Great effort to keep that puck in. Want to give a quick shout out from Ontario. The Vissers want to wish this Acadia squad well and the best of luck here today as they watch from Ontario. See Sarah Hardy with a nice chance there into the shoulder of Edmund. Turn that aside. Now 50 seconds left to the penalty of Megan Ferguson to UMB here as they dump it back down. Acadia will regroup here. It's Whiteman picking up the puck. Acadia makes a nice cross ice pass to get some two on two action going here. Shot is towards Dickinson, and she does a great job of controlling that puck. So covering up. Ducking down underneath that snow shower that she received there as well. See now Mooney going in to take the draw for. UMB as it's won back by Acadia. Marinek doing a great job controlling that. This puck is now brought back in the UMB end. We see McKenzie keeping that puck in. Shot deflected off a UMB stick and into the safety netting. Face off will be to the right of Dickinson. Three seconds left on this penalty to UMB. 9.08 left in this third period. Acadia. Really trying to get this game tied up here. Katie has done a fantastic job here in this third period. Just putting in any all pucks to the front of the net. And they get rewarded right here. 9-0-2. Left to play here in the third period. On the power play. Number five, Megan Marinick has tied this one up at two for the Axe women. A really great job by Marinick here of uh, controlling that puck off the faceoff and uh, potting that power play goal. Now the Acadia bench all fired up. You see them all standing now from that goal. As UMB dumps it down the ice. Now we have a tie game, so it'll be good to see the momentum both ways to see who's going to get this next one and uh, just how this will play out. See the puck thrown out in the middle there. Now Rodding trying to get that out. UMB does a great job to keep it in. Rodding puts that behind her net. Justin, if you're UMB, how do you respond on the bench you know, you've done a great job of holding Acadia at bay and, you know, preventing any opportunities really that close and tight to the net. And here we see them get as close to the front of the net as you possibly can without being in the goaltender's crease. Yeah, right now for uh, UMB, I believe they just can't let this goal affect uh, their spirits here. 
you know, like I said earlier, you just gotta keep in mind, like, have the mindset of just a zero-zero game uh, every and, time you play here. And basically at this point, I mean, you're looking up at the scoreboard, it says 2-2, but I mean, in our reality, you got to feel that this is a 0-0 game, and this next, the next goal that is scored in this will win the hockey game. Yes, it could possibly be. As we see Dixon do a good effort there to uh, cover this up. Could see only, maybe only one more goal, or we could see a handful. You never know in the game of hockey. Things can change in really a matter of 10 seconds, as you've seen. I've seen sometimes in... Uh, some of these junior men's games that I've been on the bench with the Hurricanes with. We see Hill now pick up that puck, trying to get it out. Katie doing a good job to keep it in, and it's deflected wide of the net now. Rudderham with it. And Katie is still putting on a lot of pressure here, as Visser is doing a great job here. Now as Becker's had an opportunity it's turned aside. Now Rudderham tries to get that out. And she does. Whiteman now with it turning away in her neutral zone. Dumping that down into the offensive zone. Rudderham picks it up again. Another message here from Max. In he wants us to know that last weekend against this UMB squad, uh, the most recent goal scorer for this Acadia team, uh, Megan Marinick tied that game as well. That one a little more closer to the uh, final buzzer than you would have liked. I mean, that it says that goal came with four tenths of a second left on the clock. Well, that's a what a time to score a goal. That's kind of like going back to the 2009 World Junior semifinal when Jordan Everly scored. I believe it was just five seconds left. This one closer, so that would have been. Quite the excitement there. We see UMB trying to get this puck out now. Patterson up to Mooney as she brings it into the neutral zone. Now we see UMB applying offensive pressure. We are getting closer and closer here to the end of regulation. You came with a great chance here, and it's dinged off the crossbar. Dickinson, I think, might want to turn around and give her crossbar a nice tap as you see her there thanking her post for being there. It looks like she was even talking to the net, you know, as a goaltender. Your posts are your last line of defense and your best friends. They're always there for you. But... Sometimes they can deflect that puck in, but uh, that is not the case here. See, Acadia touches up, now brings the puck back in. Goes behind the UMB net. There's a chance out front for Acadia. The There's a scramble. Big battle at the side right there. Acadia with a prime opportunity. Unable to capitalize. And UMB will send it back down the other way. Get an icing call here with 4.48 left to play here in the third period. We are tied here at two in this championship game between the Acadia Axe women and the UNB Red Blazers from the APM Center in Cornwall. Ian Boshane and Justin Garnham bringing you the 2015 Atlantic Eastern Canadian Women's Hockey League Championships here on Bell Community One. Yeah, and this one now, like we've been saying all tournaments, crunch time as we see number 13 of the Blazers, Adrian Beckers, with a chance that went wide. It's crunch time for both these teams, really stepping up all intensity. See Acadia now bring it in to their offensive zone. Number 23, Kalen Mann had a great chance there. But she couldn't get a stick on it. Justin, speaking from personal experience, I'm sitting up here in the booth with you, and, you know, you can't help but just look up at that clock and watch every second tick off. Yeah. It's... But, I mean, at the same time, you gotta you got to focus and know that there's still 
a lot of time left in this hockey game. There's a lot of hockey left to be played. So you don't want to get caught clock watching, you know, and end up making a mistake. Yeah, I know it's even getting me here too as we see a trip call coming to UNB. And this could prove costly. It's really not the time you want to take a penalty. As Mooney just recently had a chance, but could not convert. It is Dickinson going to the box now. And this Acadia team definitely thinking that this could be their time to uh, put one up and convert here. You see the scramble at the blue line. Here's Aaron Sove bringing it in. At the top of the circle, she puts it back to her defense. Now rotting with the shot, but it was blocked, and UMB gets to clear it down. 3.20 left to play here. Time slowly winding down. This proving to be quite a spectacle for the fans in attendance here and for these viewers online tuned into Bell Community yeah, One. This is really something else here. You know, sitting up here in the booth, and you can't help but feel a little bit of nerves for both these squads. I mean, these are all young young ladies here that have worked for so much throughout this season. All the early morning practices, the late night practices, the long travel days and road trips. and I mean, you look forward to things like that, and... You definitely look forward to putting on the jersey for that game on a Friday night or a Saturday night or even a Sunday afternoon at some in some cases. And for some of these girls, it may possibly be the last time that they do that. Yeah, you really got to... If you're supporting these fans, if you see a timeout here, I'll continue after we come back from this break. We ask you to stay tuned. We have 2.32 left to play. It's a 2-2 tie hockey game here on Bell Community 1. All right, here we go. Back here at the APM Center. We have 2.32 left to play. Still another 50 seconds on the power play for Acadia. As we see Oatway get a stick on that. And she's able to clear the zone and she'll take it herself down the ice and set things up momentarily for the Red Blazers in Acadia's end. Acadia, however, will come right back. That puck is shot right into one of the linesmen. Acadia gains entrance into the zone. Off the boards there. Acadia keeps it once again. This one's along the half wall, sent back to the point. Unable to kick it to her stick is Courtney Rotting. Time has expired on the trip. A minute 35 left to play here in the third period. You're in a 2-2 hockey game. UMB looking to bring the trophy back with them to the campus in Fredericton. We see a scramble here in front of the net. Puck is still loose, buried under body somewhere. Kicked out in a generous Generous whistle there from the official as Haley Dickinson was scrambling in her crease. She had lost her stick and just going all over the place, making moves and just trying to find that puck. And she was a beneficiary of a very quick whistle there from the official. Yeah, I know from my officiating experience, you did, like with scrambles like that, you want to blow the whistle quickly so nothing happens and Sometimes the goalie doesn't get the glove right on it. And they get that quick whistle there. Sasha Mooney back the other way for 
The Red Blazers. Now into the final minute of this third period. Possible two on one here for Kadia. It will be ruled off sides. We saw Megan Marinick there just a little too far ahead of the play. Marinick, the reason that this game is still tied. So this one here proving to be quite the game. People are getting what they asked for here, a championship game. Looking into these seats here, I see a few people on the edge of their seats. Well, we, have, there, we have some people here also just standing up that don't want to have to sit down at all. Yeah, they don't want to waste any time trying to stand up and celebrate here if anything happens. You Final th 30 seconds of regulation here. Kitty is still doing a good job to keep that in. It goes into the corner now. Set down low behind the goal line. Shot! Pass right out front. She scores! 14 seconds remaining here in regulation. And we have a 3-2 hockey game. The Axe women now take a lead here. That goal will go to number 8. Team Caitlin Higgins and we see the coach of Acadia Dave Ettinger gathering his team together once again and collecting his troops yeah and that was a really great uh, really great read by uh, number 12 Aaron Solvay to get that assist just behind the net there and really Generate a great opportunity for Acadia to take that lead now. Eight seconds left as UMB with the empty net trying to get something here. There's an offside, offside. call. Excuse me. 5.2 seconds left. Acadia now with that, the lead. Talk about spectacular there, Justin. I mean, Acadia had just worked the puck down low and sitting right out in front. As we see the final three, two, one. That is it. The Acadia Axe Women have claimed the 2015 Eastern Canadian Women's Hockey League Atlantic Championship. A fantastic game here from start to finish. And, you know, if you're the coach of the Blazers here, Andy Williams, I mean, you can't help but be anything but proud of your team. Came out here with a fantastic effort, you know, and... It was just a late, late breakdown in the defensive end, and it costs, unfortunately, on the scoreboard in the biggest way possible. Yeah, it was really great game played by the UMB Red Blazers. You know, if you're fan supporters, coaches, trainers, students, you know you cannot be disappointed with this loss. It was a really hard-fought game by these girls. And it was very entertaining to watch. But uh, it was a great job by Acadia to come back from that lead. And really good job by uh, number 18, Caitlin Higgins, to score that final goal. We will now get the player of the game presentations. And for UNB, I believe Dickinson really deserves this one here. She played her heart out. And, and she it, does. Yeah, and it is Dickinson there. Goaltender there for UNB will take the player of the game. Yeah, she played a really great game today. Really got to be proud of her. Correction there on that game-winning goal. It will be credited to number 19. It'll go to Chelsea Wilkins there. So. Now the trophy presentation here to the captain of the Acadia Axe Women. 
Dan Cudmore, representative from the Holland College Sports Department here and media relations making the presentation to the captains of Acadia. And we see nothing but joy from these Acadian, the Acadia Axe women here. And, you know, if you're UNB, it was a very, very hard fought game. And you have to be proud of the result overall. So there it is, folks. The Acadia Axe women take home the 2015 Eastern Canadian Women's Hockey League Atlantic Championship. As they gather now for a group picture at center ice. On behalf of all the staff here that helped make this event possible. I'd like to thank our camera workers this week. Those down in the box. Tyler J. Tony Gary. DJ Mikey Fresh. On the tunes. You know. From all of us here at Kane's Cast on Bell Community One, signing off for the final time. The final score for the final time the UNB Red Blazers, two, and the Acadia Axe Women, three. From the APM Sports Center here in Cornwall, Prince Edward Island. For my partner, Justin Garnum. My name is Ian Boshane. Thank you for watching. Lights out. Good night.